Hello everyone, I'm Em. Welcome back to Tech Block. Today we are finally doing the long-awaited gaming setup tour for the gaming setup that we have right here. We're going to be covering all the products here, so everything in this video will be linked down below in the description, of course, including the lights down there, the nano leaf panels that are over here, and of course, everything, literally everything in this setup will be down below in the description as well, in case you want to go buy it yourself over on Amazon. Anyway, we should probably get started as we have a whole lot of things to get through. Beginning, of course, with the Nano Leaf Aurora light panels that are right there. Thanks to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's video. Surfshark is a VPN service that makes online privacy protection easy and affordable. Surfshark encrypts all internet traffic sent to and from your devices and ensures your IP address remains hidden. They help block malware, phishing attempts, and you can use it on as many devices as you'd like. Simultaneously, the Surfshark VPN has apps for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, iOS, Android, Xbox, PlayStation, and just about everything really. I would especially recommend that you do use a VPN when connecting to public Wi-Fi networks as you never know who else could be on there potentially trying to steal your information. Get Surfshark VPN today at the first link in the video description and remember to use code TECHBLOCK for 83% off and an extra 3 months for free. Alright so here are the lights, they've all been stuck onto the wall right here in this kind of cool design. In the future I probably might expand this and maybe add a few more lights or something, we'll see, you never know what happens. But these lights here are cable managed very well, as you can see the cable kind of goes down here and then it's plugged into this very, very long power extension cord that is actually plugged into the wall all the way over there. So the way these are actually powered is kind of crazy, but it's the only way I've been able to power them whilst achieving good cable management, as that is very important. So I ran cable trunking all the way from there, going all the way around this wall. We have corner pieces, like this is really advanced cable management here and then they're powered all the way over there. So a lot of cable management work went into this and a lot of money was spent on, of course, cable managing these freaking light panels. But in the end, it turned out very nice. And um, conveniently enough, it is kind of also mounted above a radiator. Bear in mind though that that radiator is not turned on. I never use this radiator. See, it's kind of like switched off there. I've never used the radiator and I never will, mainly because the power supply for the nano leaf panels and you know the whole cable is behind the radiator i don't really want to start a fire here so the radiator is not on we don't really need a radiator in this room anyway because we have pcs monitors leds everywhere these gigantic soft boxes behind me that generate a whole lot of heat so there's absolutely no need for a radiator in this room moving on though we do have this entire racing simulator set up however i am planning on moving all of this racing sim gear to another room we're going to have a whole other racing simulator setup dedicated to this chair and all and the steering wheel which will probably come in a later video but for now this is where the racing sim is we have the logitech g920 steering wheel i believe it's called uh, i do also have a shifter that's not been unboxed yet then we have a logitech's wireless i think this is like g915 like a really really high-end keyboard it's freaking awesome and of course the uh, gt omega racing seat right here in a gt omega racing simulator frame as well made a dedicated video where i actually put all of this together that you can go ahead and watch right now by pressing the card somewhere on the screen right now and that should take you to my simulator build series but we will have a part two coming out very soon where we attach the gear shift and actually you know finally use the racing sim. <laughs> Taking a look over here though, we have a secondary desk. This is where like most of the unboxing videos are filmed. This desk goes forward like, I don't know, half a meter or so. I put a tripod there and all, and this is kind of like my normal unboxing set for videos. But for now, we're currently just using this desk to like showcase the wonderful new merch designs. Wow, look at this one. TB, drip, like beautiful colors here. Looks absolutely amazing. We have t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, and stickers as well. Available now over on the TechBlock store. Link in the description in case you want to go pick up some sick TechBlock merch like I'm wearing right now. Or perhaps some stickers. Does it have RGB? By the way, these lights here are from Colo Lights. I get a lot of questions about these lights all the time. They're very similar to Nano Leaf Aurora light panels. However, as you can see, instead of them being triangles, they're hexagons and they look absolutely amazing. And believe it or not, these lights are also powered by USB. You don't even need like a dedicated power supply for them. Just plug them into your USB and voila, you have wonderful LED lighting that you can add to your gaming setup. Like these in this setup, I think definitely add a lot. And I kind of wish that I had something else on the wall up here as I feel like I kind of need something on the wall there because it's a bit plain. Maybe when we finally hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, as we're really close, we're currently at 92,000. 
as you can see right there through the uh, Lemetric Time LED clock thingy. It's like a sub counter for YouTube. I'm sure you've seen many of them before, but I happen to have one too, and it's a great product. We would highly recommend them. Even if you're not a YouTuber, it's just a cool clock, man. It can do so much, very customizable. So yeah, we got a clock there, we got some lights, the PC, the main rig for this entire setup is an absolute monster. It is a pre-built that MSI sent me, but after this whole setup tour is done, we are gonna be putting uh, a custom-built PC in the Razer Lian Li PC case. It's gonna be a good time, and this entire setup will once again be completely redone. But as for this pre-built PC from MSI, massive shout out to MSI, by the way, for actually sending this out to me. I've been using it for quite a while now. It's an absolute monster of a gaming machine. I just wish the thermals were a little bit better as it is a very tiny PC packing some crazy horsepower. We have an i9, 9900K in there, RTX 2080 Ti from MSI of course, 32 gigs of RAM, half a terabyte NVMe PCIe SSD. It's a goddamn beast. So this is the PC I've been using for this setup, but we're gonna be selling this guy back pretty damn soon. So say your goodbyes to this MSI pre-built. It's been nice but I'm gonna be downgrading to an RTX 2060 and the Ryzen 7 2700X CPU instead of this guy. Beside this PC, we do of course have the Razer Chroma mug holder. You don't really see a lot of these around, but we happen to also have a tech block mug on top of this Razer Chroma mug holder. It's absolutely crazy. So we have like, you know, RGB here and then RGB down here too. It's like a perfect combo. Then over here beside the PC, once again, we have the Razer Chroma base station, Razer Nari Ultimate headset there, the Elgato Stream Deck, very, very nice bit of kit here. One of my favorite pieces of tech to this day. This little Stream Deck, if I switch over to uh, Adobe Premiere, as you can see, it automatically switches to my Adobe Premiere profile, but by default, it's on Spotify profile, as I listen to a whole lot of Spotify all the time. Music's blasting like 24 seven, so it's kind of handy to have a Spotify player right there. But that's not the only way we can control music, as we do, of course, have the Razer Huntsman Elite keyboard that of course has multimedia controls. We have volume, we have play, pause, next track, all this goodness here. And beside it, we have the newly released Razer Firefly V2 mouse mat hard edition. And we have the also newly released Razer Viper ultimate mouse. This is probably one of the best mice that Razer have released in a very long time. Like this for like Counter-Strike, especially it's extremely lightweight. Wireless, of course, comes with this lovely dock that we can like easily mount the mouse onto and boom, it's now charging. And you know, once it stopped charging, you can just use the mouse again. It's a good time, man. Pairing this mouse with this mouse mat is just a good time overall. As for cable management for the keyboard, the mouse mat, all this stuff going on here. For the mouse charging dock, the cable here is quite nicely managed uh, beside this monitor arm. As for the mouse mat and keyboard, the mouse mat cable goes beneath the keyboard here, the keyboard wire goes beneath the keyboard, and boom, everything kind of pops out here. They're all wrapped together via some Velcro cable ties, and then everything kind of goes beneath the PC there, and either plugs into the back, into there, or into the front. For my main display, I'm using the BenQ EX3501R. It's a curved 35 inch, 100 hertz VA panel, 3440 by 1440p resolution. It's just a great monitor overall. Very expensive, unfortunately, but the bezels on here are pretty damn thin and the overall experience using this monitor is pretty good. Apart from the refresh rate, I know it's 100 hertz. I do wish the refresh rate was like 144 or even 165 hertz. That would have been real nice. Unfortunately, though, well, I say unfortunately, but I, I mean 100 hertz is still pretty damn good, but I do wish it was a bit higher. As for the second display though, this one is nowhere near as high end and also I've like accidentally right clicked there. But this is the BenQ EL2870U, I think it's called. It's just a 28 inch 4K 60 Hertz display TN panel. So nothing crazy going on with this one. But yeah, this is just the secondary display that I happen to be using at the moment, mainly because it kind of looks okay beside the ultra wide because they're roughly the same size in terms of height. So I figured, all right, I'm gonna put them side by side, see how it looks like. It didn't look too bad, so I'm like, you know what? For this setup, we're gonna add a second display and we're gonna keep this BenQ one here. Massive shout out to BenQ, of course, for actually sending out all of these monitors here for me to use in this gaming setup. Taking a look beneath the desk though, the cable management here for the most part is very nice, apart from this area. Recently, I've added uh, a four port anchor USB hub beneath my desk alongside three SD card readers two being micro SD card readers. Then we have an LED controller 
right here as well. So we can turn the LED light strip on and off. That's mounted behind the entire desk. By the way, that light strip is from GoV. Full video coming soon. And we have uh, this thing all right here as well. So we have a button here to just change colors very quickly. And then we also have like a music mode uh, that I can enable and things go crazy, man. But I'm gonna switch it back to this mode as I kind of like the light blue color in this setup. Taking a look behind the monitors here, the cable management work for most of the setup is pretty damn good. The cable there goes down, everything here is kind of wrapped together and goes down that single monitor arm at the end there. So all the monitor cables for both the monitors go down the monitor arm behind there. I do also have some Philips Hue uh, LED play bars here, here and here. I can show you them right now. So we have like all these Philips Hue LED play bars behind this monitor as well that unfortunately refuse to pair to my Philips Hue bridge. So I can't really control the lighting effects. I can turn them all on, like the LED lights work fine. It's just that they're stuck on 100% brightness with like a warm white color. And to be completely honest, it's just way too bright. So I've kind of switched them off until I can find a way to somehow connect them to my bridge again. Oh, but it's you. As for the chair that I use for this gaming setup, this is of course from GT Omega Racing. As Black Friday is coming up, you can use code TECHBLOCK to save yourself, I think it's like 5% of your GT Omega order. So if you wanna go pick yourself up a sick gaming chair as well. The one that I'm currently using is the GT Omega Sport. Uh, however, I have also tried out the Elite. Let me tell you, the Sport one is by far the best chair that I've used from them so far, even though I think I've only used like two free chairs. But the Sport one that I have right here, is pretty damn good, would highly recommend it. It's just a very comfortable chair to sit in. I just like the overall design of the chair and everything, and I feel like it fits in quite well into this entire setup here. You may have noticed, by the way, that this setup as well has cable trunking running beneath it. Uh, so this entire room actually, yeah, almost every single wall in this room actually has cable trunking, as I have either power cables or ethernet cabling running through all of these cable trunking channels all over the place. So in the second desk here, we got uh, a speaker here from Orbi that's also kind of like my Wi-Fi hotspot. So this right here is an Orbi voice speaker. It acts as an Amazon ALEXA, like voice assistant speaker. It's really good. Basically just acts as like a normal Amazon Echo really. But on top of that, it also acts as like a Wi-Fi range extender if you have an Orbi router. So I have to have an Orbi router over in the living room behind my TV. And this is actually hooked up wirelessly to the router and it just kind of like spreads Wi-Fi signal all over the house. It's really good. And as for the speaker quality, Orbi partnered up with Harman Kardon. And I'm telling you, this speaker is one of the best speakers I've heard in my life. It just, it just fills the room with sound. The bass from this tiny little speaker, it's, it's really quite impressive. And there's a reason why I've moved this speaker slash router to this location, as in the past, it used to be over in like the storage area in the office. So I think like a few months ago, the speaker was like over here or something and it would still sound really quite good. But of course, it's a much nicer listening experience when the speaker is kind of like behind you or in front of you in the same like general area as you instead of like being behind a wall. So move the speaker there, just amazing sound quality overall. Couldn't recommend it enough. The overall like Orbi Wi-Fi mesh system and everything is just good. Like I really do like it. I'm pretty sure I've been using like the Orbi Wi-Fi mesh system as my main Wi-Fi since I moved in actually. Anyway, getting back to like the topic at hand, as that is technically a router, it has ethernet ports at the back of it. There are ethernet cables running from here into my PC of course. And then we have another cable running from there through all these cable trunking channels. They even go here around this corner and then they go through there and into, voila, what is that? That is a Synology disk station. Wow, this is my NAS from Synology. Shout out to Synology by the way for sending this out to me. Much appreciated. It's a 16 terabyte server right here. Uh, we got two eight terabyte hard drives in here. It's just a great time. This model in particular is the DS1618 Plus, six bay NAS, very good stuff here. The server is mainly used for storing away like old video files and all. And as for the rest of the storage area, it's literally just storage. Like I can show you this part, like we got some razor boxes, more boxes and some stuff that I haven't made videos about yet. So. Yeah, that entire room over there is just storage. But apart from that, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Link in the description down below to where you can buy 
anything featured in today's video, including, of course, the brand new merch that I'm wearing and is also on the table. If you want to go support the channel, of course, go ahead and pick up some merch. And once again, massive thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's video. Their link will be at the very top of the video description. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope to see you in another video soon. Goodbye.